to understand the problem of two degree of freedom system let's solve a simple problem uh, in my problem I have considered two masses m1 and m2 of magnitude 8 kilogram and 3 kilogram and two spring elements of stiffness 1000 Newton per meter in 500 Newton per meter so as a conventional process first I have to make the equation of motion of the system and for that purpose first I have to make the free body diagram of the two masses so let's assume that the mass is moving in this direction with an acceleration x1 double dot and these two spring forces are acting opposite to the direction of the motion of the mass this force is k1 x1 and the second force is k2 x1 minus x2 similarly for the second mass if the mass is going in this direction with an acceleration x2 double dot there will be only one force on this side and there there will not be any force on the other side when I will apply the D Lambert principle and I will write the equation of motion I will get m1 x1 double dot plus k1 plus k2 x1 minus k2 x2 is equal to 0 it is corresponding to the first mass and similarly I will get the second equation that will be m2 x2 double dot minus k2 x1 plus k2 x2 is equal to 0 now to move further I have to use a generalized solution uh, for the two displacement and here I have considered harmonic solution for both the masses for the first mass it is x1 cos omega t for the second mass x2 cos omega t x1 and x2 are the two constant and basically indicating the magnitude of the vibration omega representing the frequency of oscillation please understand that I have considered the frequency same for both the masses so now when I will put this general solution into my governing equation my equation will further simplify with this expression that minus m1 omega square capital X1 plus k1 plus k2 capital X1 minus k2 x2 is equal to 0 because when I will put the x value into these two e e equations the cos theta term will be eliminated and I will get the first equation without the cos omega t term similarly I will get the second equation and when I will rearrange all these terms I will get a matrix form of these two equations where the first term is minus m1 omega square plus k1 plus k2 minus k2 minus k2 and minus m2 omega square plus k2 second I am having a displacement vector denoted by capital X1 and capital X2 now this is my characteristic equation and I know that I can get a trivial solution by assuming that X1 and X2 are 0 but that will not serve the purpose so I will consider that the determinant of this matrix will be 0 and when I will use all the numerical values and I will put the numerical value in this determinant I will get this expression and when I will solve the mat determinant I will get a quadratic equation in terms of omega square <coughs> when I will solve the quadratic equation for keeping that omega square is my variable I will get two roots of this equation one is the omega 1 is square and second one is the omega 2 is square and value of these two roots are 74.49 and 279.69 these two roots are nothing but the two natural frequency of my system and when I will take the square root I am getting that the first natural frequency is 8.63 radian per second and the second natural frequency is 16.72 radian per second after getting the two natural frequencies the next job will be to put these two natural frequency into go back to the governing equation and try to find out the value of x1 and x2 so here uh, I am having two governing equation so now the question arises that whether I should put the omega value in the first equation or in the second equation but let me tell you that both the equation will give the same result and we can check here so for checking I am putting the omega 1 value into my first equation and I am getting this expression and when I am solving this expression I am getting a ratio x2 by x1 is equal to 1.8 <coughs> similarly when I am putting the omega 1 value into my second governing equation this is represented by this equation and again I am getting the same ratio x2 by x1 is equal to 1.8 so now we can see that 
either we will put the value in first or second equation we are getting the same expression for x2 by x1 and this x2 by x1 just represent uh, uh, the motion of the two masses when the system is vibrating with frequency omega 1 we call it this is the normal mode or the pattern of vibration of our system and it indicates that if the first mass is moving with an amplitude 1 the second mass will move with an amplitude 1.8 times of the first mass so please keep it in mind that these these two values are not the absolute value but we are getting the relative value similarly when i will put the second natural frequency into any of these governing equation i will get a ratio x2 by x1 is equal to minus 1.47 here minus sign indicate that if my first mass is moving with an amplitude 1 the second mass will move with an amplitude 1.47 but in opposite direction and this is my second normal mode after getting the two normal modes the next job is to find the actual response of your system and for that purpose we have to understand that if the body or if the system is moving with the first natural frequency the system will behave with a unique solution that indicate that if the first mass will move one unit and the second mass will move 1.8 unit and both the masses will move in the same direction if the system is moving with the second natural frequency the unique solution will be that the first mass will move with the one unit and the second mass will move with the 1.47 times of that the displacement of first mass but in the opposite direction now if i am having any arbitrary excitation to my system for example that if this is my system and i am giving a initial displacement x to nod to my second mass then what will happen in such case your response will be the contribution of both the masses uh, both the modes and that i am representing that the x1 this is the this is the contribution from the first mode and this is the contribution by the second mode similarly the response of the second mass will be the contribution of x2 for the first mode and x2 for the second mode when i will put the solution or i will extend this equation i will see that the x1 cos omega t plus phi 1 and x2 x1 for the second mode cos omega 2t plus phi 2 where omega is the, 1 is the first natural frequency omega 2 is the second natural frequency phi 1 and phi 2 basically representing the ratio or the contribution similarly for the second case i am having x2 for the first mode cos omega 1t plus phi 1 and x2 for the second mode cos omega 2t plus phi 2 when i will rearrange this equation i am getting that the x1 will be x1 cos term plus x1 for the second mode cos term and now what i am doing i am replacing this x2 value or the magnitude of the second mode with the calculated mode shape corresponding to the first mode as well as for the second mode for example if i am taking the ratio is r1 my x2 will be for the first mode will be r1 times of y x1 for the first mode similarly here i am getting that x2 will be for the second mode will be r2 times of x1 of second mode so by putting these two values or replacing that x2 for the first mode and x2 by the second mode i am having these two equation and in this equation i can see that there are four unknowns one two three and four remaining terms as omega one and omega two i have already calculated what r1 and r2 is already calculated these two are nothing but the ratio of the two displacement corresponding to the two different normal modes so after getting the d this equation that is x1 and x2 when i will put the r1 value and the r2 value into these two equation 
and I will solve the four equation by taking some initial value I will get my solution here I am considering that if this is my system where masses are 8 kilogram and 3 kilogram these are the thousand hard thousand Newton per meter and 500 Newton per meter are my stiffness and I am assuming an initial condition that my first mass having zero displacement but it is having a velocity of magnitude 1 at initial time t is equal to 0 for the second mass no displacement and no velocity so now when I will use the first equation and I will put t is equal to 0 it will be 0 here t will be 0 so cos phi 1 and cos phi 2 and my x1 for the first mode and x1 for the second mode this will be my equation when I will put the second value into my second equation I am getting this expression that no displacement R1 X1 cos phi 1 and R2 X1 for the second mode cos phi 2 similarly when I will differentiate these two equation and I will put the two velocity value I am getting this expression that for the first mass my velocity is 1 after differentiating I am getting at a minus x1 for the first mode omega 1 sin phi 1 minus x1 for the second mode omega 2 sin phi 2 and the fourth equation which is corresponding to the second mass zero velocity I am getting this expression so now I am having four equation 1 2 and 3 4 and 4 unknown as first mode x1 second mode x1 phi 1 and phi 2 so when I will solve the first two equation I am getting a value that my phi 1 and phi 2 both will be of pi by 2 magnitude and when I will put this pi by 2 magnitude of phi 1 and phi 2 in my equation 3 and 4 I am getting these two equation and by solving these two equation I am getting a value x1 for the first mode is minus 0.052 and second mode minus 0.033 so now when I will put these two values as well as these two phi's into my actual two governing equation I am getting this expression which is representing the response of the two masses and for the different time instant and this t value is nothing but when I will put a value of let's I want to find the response of the system for t is equal to 0.2 second I can put t is equal to 0.2 in this equation and I will get a magnitude of x1 as well as I will get a magnitude for x2 and these two value will tell me that if my system is vibrating with an initial velocity 1 after 0.2 second the position of the first mass will be represented by the response of the first mass and the position of the second mass will be represented by the response of the second mass. Thank you.